morning and welcome to St. Cuthbert's Leeside. It is an honor to welcome you here either in person or online via YouTube live stream. First, um, as we gather today, it is happy Father's Day to all those that are fathers and to all of us who have fathers. The importance is to be all inclusive. A special note of thanks to the Chancel Guild members who have beautifully packaged a little treat bag for all the gentlemen in the parish, um, or please feel free to take them home with you for, even if it's for a neighbor. I suspect we have, may have a few more than we might need, but uh, thanks to the hard work of the Chancel Guild. As we gather today, we are honoring and marking the National Indigenous Day of Prayer, 
When we gathered last year, we were strictly online and had a pre-recorded service, which allowed us to include Indigenous voices. And in fact, the majority of that service was from members of the Anglican Indigenous community, either through Toronto Urban Native Ministry or from the Right Reverend Chris Harper, who is an Indigenous Bishop in our church. That was a tremendous gift for all of us. And this year, as we gather, we're not able to do that, to include the same Indigenous voices. And as such, I just want to highlight that our service is not at all about appropriating Indigenous spirituality. It is about seeking to honor that Indigenous Anglican spirituality, both through our prayer to the four directions that Barbara and Lorraine will be leading, as well as our creed, which actually comes from the American Lutheran Indigenous community. So with God's blessing and care, hopefully our horizons will be expanded as we join together in the liturgy and hear the words appointed for the National Indigenous Day of Prayer. We begin or continue with the St. Cuthbert's Leeside Acknowledgement of Indigenous Territory and Lillian Wells is going to read that for us. Lillian is the chair of our Truth and Reconciliation Committee here at St. Cuthbert's Leeside. This sacred land is the territory of several indigenous nations, the Wenda, the Hosanagi, and Ashunabi, with special recognition to the Mississippi, Mississaugas of New Credit. We also acknowledge that we are on the shores of Nagani Kichigami, Lake Ontario. This territory is governed by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Treaty, an agreement between the Hassanadi Confederacy and the Ashinaabe Confederacy to peacefully share and sustain the life of the Great Lakes. In the spirit of that treaty, we seek to place at the center of our gatherings the values of respectful reciprocity, diversity, peace, responsibility, and mutual aid. Our opening hymn is hymn number nine in the Common Praise Hymnal, Today I Awake.
Come, Great Spirit, as we gather in your name. We face east to your symbol, color red, the hue of revelation, to your animal symbol, the eagle, strong and nurturing, to your lessons calling us to the balance of your spirit in harmony with brothers and sisters and siblings, to invoke your wisdom and grace, the goodness of the ages, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. We turn to face south, to your symbol, color gold for the morning star, to your symbol, brother sun, that enlightens our intellect and brings light on our path to live responsibly, to your lessons calling us to balance of mind in the spirit of humility, to invoke your spirit of illumination and far-sighted vision Help us to love you and one another with our whole heart, our whole mind, and our whole soul. We pray. We turn to face west, to your symbol color black, still and quiet, to your animal symbol, the thunderbird, to your symbol, the thunder, mighty and purposeful, to your lessons calling us to balance our emotions in the spirit of gentleness and honesty, to invoke your spirit of introspection, seeing within. Give us your strength and the courage to endure. We pray, come, Holy Spirit, come. We turn to face north, to your symbol, color white of clarity and brightness, to your animal symbol, the swan, which brings us in touch with Mother Earth and growing things, to your lessons, causing us to balance our body in the spirit of a good sense of humor, to invoke your spirit of innocence, trust, and love. Help us to open our eyes to the sacredness of every living thing. We pray, come, Holy Spirit, come. We turn to complete the circle and to look to God, our creator, who cleanses our mother earth with snow, wind, and rain. To Jesus Christ, the peacemaker, who fills us with the wideness of mercy and lovingly embraces all. And the Holy Spirit, who inspires us to action. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Special note of thanks to Barbara and Lorraine for leading us in the prayer honoring the four directions taken from the Cree Nation. Please be seated for our first reading. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. To whom then will not compare me, or who is my equal? Says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my, by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will, will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. <clears throat> but those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. <clears throat> Psalm 19, responsively. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. 
One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into the lands, and their message to the ends of the earth. <clears throat> In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth. <clears throat> The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. <laughs> the fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. <clears throat> By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound, and innocent of a great offense. Meditation of my heart be acceptable to your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made God known. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for your word, for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, for this opportunity to stop and to open ourselves to your Spirit, to acknowledge the wrongdoings of the past, and to seek truth and reconciliation with our Indigenous siblings. We pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. <laughs> from our reading from the prophet Isaiah, God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted, but those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Our passage from Isaiah this morning falls in chapter 40. One of my favorite chapters of scripture and one that I tend to use whenever I can. It begins, comfort O oh, comfort my people, says the Lord. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and tell her that her hard service is done. Isaiah 40 are words of comfort, words of hope and restoration, 
words of renewal and strength. The words are moving and powerful, and I dare you to try to not think about Handel's Messiah. But I have always heard these words spoken to the Babylonian exiles proclaiming their time of liberation. I have always heard these words spoken to the Jewish people in exile in Babylon from the perspective of the one being oppressed, from the one to whom redemption is at hand. Today, as we honor the National Indigenous Day of Prayer and seek to face the wrongdoings of the residential school system, the systemic injustice faced by our Indigenous siblings, I am forced to see Isaiah 40 not from the perspective of the one being liberated, but from the perspective of the one who has participated albeit at times unknowingly, or so I like to think, in the act of oppression. It may not come as a surprise to you that I am a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. I do not know the reality of oppression or blatant racism faced by those who are indigenous or people of color or of another faith, be it Jewish or Muslim, or another faith. And it is not a comfortable place to face the colonialism, systems, policies, or theology that have fueled such injustices. As followers of Jesus, we know that our scriptures have been used for very different purposes to promote very different perspectives. Our scriptures have been used to justify slavery and to bring about the abolition of slavery. We know that our scriptures have fueled the oppression of marginalized groups whether it is women, people of the Jewish or Muslim faith, LGBTQ2S individuals, people of color, those who are divorced. How many of you remember when even the Anglican Church would not remarry those who were divorced? Anyone? That's grace for you. Scripture has been used to oppress a number of marginalized individuals. We also know that our scriptures have been used by others to bring about liberation, equality, and a new understanding. Honestly, confronting the harm and even brutality that has been imposed on others in the name of Christ in the name of civilization is essential, especially as we gather today. There is another reality to the double-edged sword of our scripture, and that is how the perspective of translators can seep into our understanding. A very strong example comes to us from the Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. I do not know what the Pew Bibles say, but I will let you know that there are two versions of that one verse, or the beginning of that verse. The verse says, I am black, blank, beautiful. The blank is a conjunction. It can be translated either as and or as but. So, depending on the perspective of the translator, the Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5, can be read, I am black and beautiful, or I am black but beautiful. Those are two very different perspectives. 
Anglican residential schools operated at various times between 1820 and 1969. The Anglican Church of Canada administered approximately three dozen residential schools for Indigenous children. And the last residential school in Canada, not run by the Anglican Church, closed not in 1969 or even 1989, but in what year? Can anyone tell me, aside from the Truth and Reconciliation Committee? Anyone? 1996. That's not that long ago. Within the Anglican Church, the schools were known as Indian and Eskimo residential schools. It is estimated that 150,000 Indigenous children attended the government-sponsored schools that were overseen by the Anglican, Roman Catholic, United and Presbyterian churches in Canada. Successive parliaments endorsed policies that sanctioned the removal of Indigenous children from their, quote, evil surroundings, end quote, of family and community, and subjected them to the re-socializing programs in the schools. In the blunt language of a century ago, Ottawa's policy was simply stated as, quote, the savage child would surely be remade into the civilized adult. Over recent years and decades, the reality of injustice faced by Indigenous peoples, the intergenerational trauma, and the horrific stories of abuse that, if we are honest, are more akin to torture and murder, have come to light. I don't think I am alone in asking, and my apologies, kind of, what the hell were we thinking? On some level, we thought what we were doing was right. It has taken us a great deal of time since 1969, but thankfully, through the grace of God, we have come to see what was done to our Indigenous siblings in a new light. In 1986, the United Church was the first to issue an apology that used the words sorry. That is really what an apology is. In 1993, Archbishop Michael Pierce, the Anglican Church of Canada, issued the first apology on behalf of our church. In 1994, the Presbyterian Church followed suit in what they called a full confession of wrongdoing. And in 2008, Prime Minister Harper issued an apology. And finally, in 2022, Pope Francis issued an apology that actually said, we are sorry. Something that previous Roman Catholic bishops had never said. They acknowledged wrongdoing, right? They were sorry for the way it impacted, but that is very different than being truly, earnestly sorry. In the prophet Isaiah, we hear of the people hearing the good news of comfort and of liberation from their Babylonian exile. But way back in the book of Daniel, we hear of the beginning of that exile of the Jewish people. The book of Daniel begins in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it and took the people of Judah captive. The plan for the assimilation of the people of Judah may seem familiar. Nebuchadnezzar removed them from their home. He then had them taught in the literature and language of the Chaldeans. He changed their names. And Nebuchadnezzar tried to change their religion take them from their home, strip them from their literature, strip them from their language, give them new names, 
and try to give them a new religion. Sound familiar? In the book of Daniel, when Nebuchadnezzar tries to change their religion, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would not bow down to Nebuchadnezzar's God, so they were thrown into a fiery furnace. In the book of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego managed to walk out of that fiery furnace unscathed. Our indigenous siblings, far too many of our indigenous siblings, were not so fortunate. And it was a fiery furnace of our own making. As we seek to deepen our awareness on this, the National Indigenous Day of Prayer, there are numerous resources that can enlighten us. We are very blessed at St. Cuthbert's to have a very active Truth and Reconciliation Committee chaired by Lillian, and those that are on the committee include Lorraine and Barbara, as well as Ellen, Bryant, Wensi, and Nicolette. Am I forgetting anyone? Okay. I would invite you to either look on our website or on the National Anglican Church website to explore the 94 calls to action, the opportunity to contribute to the Spirit Garden, which is to be built at Nathan Phillips Square, or to find out more about the Healing Fund. This coming Wednesday, the Truth and Reconciliation Committee are hosting a virtual tour of the Mohawk Institute Residential School in Brantford. I can promise you that it will not be an easy tour to participate in, but it will be a tour that will deepen our understanding of the reality of the harm that was caused at residential schools and to, God willing, strengthen our resolve to seek greater truth and greater reconciliation with our Indigenous siblings. As we continue this service and go from this place, may we be open to God's prompting to see the wrongs that we have done whenever we have denied the full humanity of another person. And may we be strengthened to make it right this day and always. Amen. Oh, yeah. 
continues with a proclamation of faith taken from the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America in consultation with the Indigenous Lutheran Association in the United States. Please stand as you are able. Anytime we listen to new voices, we have the opportunity to expand our understanding and grow in faith. The creed below provides such an opportunity by inviting us to see the triune God in a new way. We believe in Creator, Father, Mother, Spirit, who called the world and all that is in it into being, who spoke the creative forming word, and all came forth who created women and men and set them free to live in love, in obedience to the will of supreme love and in community with all. We believe in creator, son, and brother, who because of love beyond our understanding, love for creation entered the world to share our humanity, to rejoice and to despair, to set before us the paths of life and death and walk them with us, to be rejected and die, but finally to conquer death and bind the world to himself for all time. We believe in Creator, indwelling Spirit, who invites us into community that we may, through faith, and that community of oneness experience uplifting and sustaining grace, that we may fulfill our human responsibility to reach out to our neighbor, whoever that may be, that we may rejoice in the constant nature of creation and the wondrous joy of life itself. We believe in Creator, whose word teaches us that all things grow together, the circle of life, that the paths of life and death, good and evil, too often come together, that choices are not clearly defined, but that we confidently and responsibly tread the path we choose, and only the true one can be our judge. We believe in Creator, who is present, 
and working in this world through all creation. Amen. Please be seated. We begin with our weekly petitions on page 11 as you follow. Today we offer special thanksgiving for the gift of fathers who model the love of God and pray for any who grieve the loss of their fathers. We also pray for fathers who grieve the death of a child or the gift of fatherhood. And we pray for any who find this day difficult due to memories or experiences. In the world, we pray for those suffering in the midst of war, civil unrest, violence, disasters, or the impact of climate change. We pray for the people of Ukraine and for the hope of peace. Within our community, we uphold in love all those who live and work along Besborough Drive. We pray for the Church of South Sudan and the Ecclesiastical Province of Ontario. We pray for St. John, East Orangeville, St. John, Ida, Parish of Ida and Omimi, St. John, West Toronto, and we uphold them within their numerous outreach activities. We pray for our bishops, Justin, Linda, Anne, Sydney, Andrew, Kevin, and Rysilla. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Alexandra Scotchelis, Sean Little, and their children, Caroline and Angus, <coughs> Barbara St. Hill Skinner, Michael and Judy Stevenson, Sheila Strawn, Ken and Carrie Ann Sylvester, and their children, Kyla and Christopher. We pray for those in special need. Joe C., Sharon, Debbie, Cheryl, Rachel. We continue to uphold Alexander, Ann C., Brian and Cheryl C., Carol, Constance, Dale, James, Jean, Linda, Lisa, Marilyn, Mary, and Shirley. We give thanks for the life lived of Janet Lawrence known many years ago at St. Cuthbert's in our St. Cuthbert's family as Jenny Thompson. We pray for her husband, Stan, and her daughters, Claire and Eva, and for all her friends and family who mourn. At this time, please offer your personal prayers, either silently or aloud. We pray especially for all those who will be traveling over the weeks ahead. We uphold in particular Bob and Kathy Davies and Ted and Lorna Krawchuk. On this day of National Indigenous Peoples Day, we follow the prayers on page eight, written by the Reverend Lee Kern, Our prayer response this morning is, in the shadow of your wings, we are held. And we all in your presence. Creator of all life, we lift our hearts to you in gratitude for all the medicines and teachings of this season of life. We take this moment to center ourselves. We raise our hearts in gratitude for the gift of breath. We thank you 
living spirit for the gift of our bodies, the lands and waters and relationships that sustain us. In the shadow of your wings we are held. Shelter us in your loving mercy. We pray for those who are sick, exhausted, shut in, for health care workers, long-term care workers, for all who are vulnerable, for those who are sick, on reserve, or remote communities, in cities undes undes underserved, for all living without access to clean drinking water or other basic necessities of health, for those who are without shelter, for those who don't have enough to eat, for those who are struggling to survive, for their safety and their protection. In the shadow of your wings we are held. Shelter us in your loving mercy. For our national Indigenous Bishop, Sidney Black, for the Indigenous House of Bishops and all healers, traditional teachers, elders, priests, deacons, lay and community leaders, for the self-determining Indigenous Church and all its leaders, for Toronto Urban Native Ministry and the Reverend Evan Smith, Reverend Lee Cairn, and Sandra Campbell, who was the artist who created the stole gifted to Louise last month and her design on the front of our cover today. For all of front lines of healing and justice, for the flourishing of our ministries and guidance of your Holy Spirit, for our local chiefs and indigenous leadership and governance, for all in leadership and authority, for the creativity of your vision. In the shadow of your wings we are held. Shelter us in your loving mercy. For those who have died, for all who have died alone, for all whose lives have been cut short by violence, for all murdered and indigenous women girls, and two-spirit peoples, for all who mourn and grieve lost ones. For justice and healing at every level of our relationships and societies, for the healing of the legacy of Indian residential schools and policies of child apprehension, for the vulnerable, the prisoners, refugees, and all who are afraid. In the shadow of your wings, we are held. Shelter us in your loving mercy. <clears throat> For all engaged in building trusting relationships and alliances across difference. For the liberation of our hearts and minds from all forms of racism. For the fire of your spirit to enkindle renewal across this land. Open our hearts, O God. Grant us compassion. Help us see our interdependence. Let love transform our communities. We thank you, source of life, mother of our souls, for our creation and all the nourishment of Mother Earth. In the shadow of your wings, we are held. Shelter us in your loving mercy. Amen. stand so that we might be a sign of peace in God's world let us be at peace with one another the peace of the Lord be always with you
and also with you. Our offertory hymn is hymn number 576 in the Blue Common Praise Hymnal for the Healing of the Nations, verses 1, 2, 4, and 5 in the hymnal. Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. All things come of thee and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Let us join together in the collect or prayer for today. Creator God, from you every family in heaven and earth takes its name. You have rooted and grounded us in your covenant love and empowered us by your spirit to speak the truth in love and to walk in your way towards justice and wholeness. Mercifully grant that your people, journeying together in partnership, may be strengthened and guided to help one another to grow into the full stature of Christ, who is our light and our life. Amen. And now, as Jesus taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it was in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Please do not forget to pick up your little Father's Day gentleman goodie bags. I'm going to take a few to the back. I just don't want you to think that I'm absconding with a bunch of them. Our closing hymn is O Healing River. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God, and happy Father's Day. Good morning, everybody. Me again. I'm Kathy Davies. With a few announcements, there's quite a few on here. I'll just try and touch briefly on each of these. Uh, and I think this was an amazing service. Thank you uh, for everybody who put together this uh, wonderful prayer for Indigenous people. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you can read about how math masks are now optional. We're in the green stage. Uh, the choirs are required to still stay masked because we do a little too much spitting. But while I'm doing my announcements, I can take my mask off. Thank you, Jane. Comes through the microphone much better. Uh, you can read more about the different, what levels of the green stage represent within the church and what is acceptable now. From the wardens, there's financial update on here, and I'll link that in with last week's legacy giving and estate planning uh, from Peter, who came to visit with us. There are a few startling uh, surprises that he told us about. Did you know that only 30% of Canadians have an up-to-date legal will in place? And one of the other things that uh, surprised me as well is how people of, of faith who, who are uplifted every week by their church communities, when they die, 
they will give to another well-advertised advertising budget kind of charities and forget about their faith community. And I thought that quite startling. And I, years ago, my husband and I decided that many of those huge charities with huge operating budgets and advertising budgets, they really get out there and they get so many people to donate, but it's the little ones and it's our, our little circle that needs it in many ways more than the great big giant ones. Not to say everybody's, everybody needs it. I will not deny that for sure. But uh, we tend to try to, to do the ones that touch us the most. Um, mark your calendars for this coming Wednesday, the 22nd. There is a 30 participant limit on doing the Truth and Reconciliation, uh, the, the Mohawk College tour, the online tour. If you would please let Reverend Janet know that if you are interested, because there is a limitation on the number of invitations that will, the links will go out to the invited people. That's in the, in the bulletin as well. Um, we are pleased to have our next service of Holy Baptism next Sunday as we all renew our baptismal vows, which is such a wonderful thing to do. Our Bayview Garden Project update, if you have not had a chance to wander out into the gardens, please come out. Um, some pretty busy bees have been out there working, as well as many volunteer waterers and planters. And we've had so many people walk in off the street to just tell us how wonderful it is and sit quietly on the benches and just share time. and and. And their stories about walking by and watching it grow. And it's just lovely to hear what the neighbors are saying. Uh, book discussion group it meets the third Thursday of each month. Information is also in here. Uh, Faith Works in the Spirit Garden. More information on that. If you can please uh, refer to that. There's a spirit garden that was... Uh, in the June 1st issue of uh, Faith Lines, Bishop Andrew acknowledges the pain and suffering of the First Nations people. Uh, call to action number 82 requires installation of residential school monuments in each provincial capital. Uh, the Spirit Garden in Toronto is to be a place of teaching, learning, sharing, and healing. And you can read more about that in Faith Lines uh, on the link. And speaking of gardens, uh, many of you have shown interest that you would love to come out and give us a hand once a week uh, to give us a hand with some watering of our beautiful garden in the front and our vegetable garden, which provides uh, last year over $4,500 worth of produce to the Flemington Food Bank, who are just so grateful for our, our work. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you down at Coffee Tea and spill out onto the green to visit the garden on this beautiful day. Our postlude today is the Haudenosaunee Unity Stomp. Somebody, my Somebody,
Ah, 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 ah,